Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a day one starter base inside a mountainside. You know, something pretty easy to start yourself off in your Minecraft world. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. Starting off, find a valid cliff side that you can use for this. It doesn't have to be anything magnificent, although if you do find something you like, feel free to use it. Although any good old hill will work, I mean even ravine right there would work if you made a ladder. So, go forth, and then just start digging a 3x3 hole in the wall. I'm going to only be using readily accessible forest blocks for this. I might resort to using spruce later on, but I'm going to try to make sure that everything you need can be found right in that biome right there. And then, when you dig into the wall, I mean that's already 27 blocks, so a little bit of time. I want some oak planks along the wall like this. Nothing too crazy yet. Then you do a little bit more and now you have a very small starting room. Of course the build is not going to stay like this. For now the bottom block of your walls can be cobblestone if you really want that decoration while the floor can be birch. And this technically is already a day one base. You just need a ceiling, a door, a torch, but we can do a little bit better. I mean, this is a very basic house, but at the same time, think about the lesser used blocks around you. More like the polished granite, diorite, andesite, and potentially later on, even deep slate. Think about those blocks as you start collecting things in your world. Right here, I've made a few minor adjustments to accommodate for what's likely your second day. And first off, you can see a ceiling with a chiseled stone brick, and then I have a lantern. Sure, one iron might be daunting at first, but not anything too serious in the long run. Anyways, the cobblestone has been replaced with stone bricks, simply because cobblestone struggles in interiors I've found. And then for the floor, I used a thatched pattern of birch. You can see how every time I place a block, I cycle it. And then, when you do that, you get this nice woven pattern. From here, you can start placing down your basic essentials. You get a bed, a nice little red bed, maybe a little bit of nostalgia. Then you can have a crafting table, furnace, and so on. And this is, well, a serviceable base for your beginnings. Of course, a little empty at first. But a lot of the things I want to do here is how to expand your base from this. Because, let's be honest, a villager house doesn't exactly serve you for very long. And let's start by doing the exterior. Get out some andesite, although tough can also work for this depending on your region. And then, we want to do a nice staircase around this. Then, we can continue this pattern, a little bit of extra andesite up here, place more stairs, etc. And now, you have a little secured entrance. And this really lets you have a nice path around this region. And when you have a nice entrance to your build, it becomes a lot better. Even though I've done almost nothing to the build itself besides andesite, you can already see it looks a little bit better, although it's a little bit square. And you should keep this in mind for a lot of the build. Try making a little path, even if it's out of cobblestone or cobbled deep slate, make it extend to somewhere else nearby. Inside this little house, I decked it all out, a little painting, a little place for your original wooden pickaxe if you're sentimental, some more storage, and well, what you can do in a 3x3 area. Of course, you'll probably want to expand it, but it's always nice to have some sort of homestead that is not a pile of chests in the middle of a field. Anyways, I expanded the andesite and I added a singular decorated pot here. I did the pot mainly because, well, you're likely to come across a little bit of archaeology in the early game. Or at least if you're so slightly obsessed with trails and tales like I am. Anyways, I have this nice granite path that goes to absolutely nowhere. But still, it's a start, and you'll notice how I curved it. What I did is I started with a straight path, and then I made the outer end extend one block further to keep it consistent, even if it has wider parts at some points. And then, I do three, two, one, two, three. And then I go back to normal. 
you can see how this curve actually just works. And then if you extend five blocks from here and here, you have granite, and then you do one block in the middle, and now you have a curve. Then you can continue this all the way along in order to make sure that you have a nice path to wherever you need to go. I'm sure it's undetailed for now, but it's still a beginning, and that's what's important. If you have the groundwork for things, and you start them, and then you have something to move forward with, then it becomes a lot easier to finish said project. With the path extended, and these little stairs going a little bit higher, make sure they're symmetrical, or if they're asymmetrical, provide something to make them actually unique from each other, rather than one block differences. And then, with your path arching outward, you might want a farm, because this is assuming you just booted up Minecraft, you don't know what to do, so you watch this tutorial. And well, you need a food source most likely. I understand sweet berries are pretty nice, but at the same time, I prefer not to stand there for like 20 something seconds eating, and then watching as I lose all my hunger because I need to regenerate. You know, Minecraft problems. Anyways, what you want to do is carve out a decently sized area. You can do this weird stair design I usually do, although that might come with minor issues. But still, make sure you have sides of stairs ready, and then from here to the land. You don't have to do terribly much from here, besides make sure that there is water. Water spreads out in a 4 block radius for hydration purposes. So I'm going to assume that maybe right around here is where the farm is going to end. Does it have maximum efficiency? Definitely not. But it's a nice farm that gets the job done. This is meant to be a cute little base, you can build very quickly, even if you're one of those people that can't stand to stay in a world for more than 20 minutes at a time. And then, make sure they're 8 blocks apart, so that way, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then, if you do this right, everything will stay hydrated. And then, right here, more water, count this to keep it symmetrical. And right here is where it ends. This is where you can have your farm. You can arch it back inward, but I'm not going to do that right this moment. Add the water, and then you might want to waterlog them. So that way you don't fall in. So something like this, you can see how if you're trying to do farming, well, you could fall in. That wouldn't be very fun. So instead, try putting something like a slab or a lily pad over it. And then... Just like that, no more issues. Walk right over it with minimal height differences compared to farmland. With the farm fully hydrated, you can start planting crops now. Remember, placing only one kind of crop reduces productivity, which means intercropping, search it up if you need to, will increase your food rates, even if it might be a little less visually pleasing. Most likely, I'm going to not intercrop since this is an aesthetic build for YouTube, although if you're here for the practicality, then I recommend doing it. Then, for the middle between these two areas, I have the path curve back around after some time, so that way I can have a second area. Well, you want to put in some animal pens, and here's what's important about the animal pens. Because, well, you can't live on crops forever, and there's some other things such as wool or leather, etc. What you want to do is kind of replicate what you have going on here, which by the way, maybe include a middle segment, something like this, I don't know, that's very simplistic, but the idea is there. You'll want to do things like that, more stairs, and don't forget your fences and fence gates to get in and make sure the animals can get in as well. Something like this, going up, and then it meets here. You might want to not make it line up at the same point though, but that might be a me thing. And then copy that around and dig into the wall. This is going to be for your later days. I know day one tutorial talking about later days. Yeah, I guess I click baited you, but anyways, start digging out the area. It doesn't have to be too large unless it's for sheep, but sheep are a whole nother deal. You might not want to farm them yet outside of a few for wool. And then, you put some basic grass inside. If you don't have grass already, because silk touch and such, 
then moss or even dirt for the time being will work. Do the fences, fence gates, and then make sure you divide the segments and what do you know, you have four animal pens. Right here, I have now decorated the individual segments using some birch logs and then I used some blocks to make sure that they were slightly higher than these little segments here. And then, in order to prove that diorite is in fact a pretty building block, I built the roof out of it. And you can see how I have these full blocks down here, where I have the asymmetry before the pillar in the middle before going back down. And then, I make that replicate in the middle, mirror it, and now I have some nice diorite. If you want to make it a bit more interesting, you can add some polished blocks randomly. You can do this in order to add a lot more detail into it. Even if it's not the craziest invention ever, the slight amount of noise it brings to the build, like the staticiness, is really good. You can see how it looks a bit more natural. And you can even damage some pieces of it, although your mileage may vary depending on what's behind it. Especially since you might have a roof for this. So don't bother trying to mess up some of the stair patterns until you have the roof on the inside done. Add some polished diorite to make it more interesting, and then you can go to the inside. Right here, I did that thatched ceiling where it looks kind of woven, added some more lanterns. Since by the time you have a crop farm, you should be getting your first diamonds, especially if you're having animal issues and need a pen for them you should probably have enough iron to spare for the decoration. If need be, use torches instead. And then for the walls, I broke them open, added some stairs to round them out, and put granite behind them. At the same time, that still is a little boring on its own. So you might want to add some stairs and slabs to give it the illusion of being damaged. Something like this, the occasional polished block, and now you can make it seem a bit more interesting. Maybe it's like bricks or something. And then this, a few cracks in it. You can do stone bricks or granite there. I prefer stone bricks though. And now you can seriously touch up the build with texturing. Don't forget mossy blocks exist. And then my final thing to say about these pens before showing the completed version. Divide them up. You can see I have a line of polished andesite going across the top. Well, if you divide the stuff like this, maybe a little bit of texturing here and there, what do you know? Now you have a divider. If need be, add fence gates, but I consider it not necessary since these pens are small, and you can just go right around the corner. You don't need some interior access or anything. Right here, you can see the granite's textured, the stone bricks are mossified, and there are animals in here. With that nice ceiling design, and then some lanterns in the middle, it's now a perfectly suitable animal farm. And what do you know, you have your tiny house, which you can always upgrade. I mean, look at this. You already have a very, very basic house. Make more rooms, even if they're identical or just the same thing scaled up with wider roofs. What do you know, you have a basis for making a base. Although I don't recommend expanding this one indefinitely, so it's a worthwhile investment for your day one. And now the plants are growing, and this is pretty much completely livable. But of course, it's still a little empty. We have this granite here, which is untextured. I recommend doing the same thing. And then these areas here, they also need a little bit of touching up. There just isn't anything going on, and that is not a good thing. Make sure that there's always at least something. If they're bland and simple lines across, that comes off as unfinished. Right here, you can see it's unfinished. Make it look like the roof here where it has all those cracks and the polished versions scattered around. And then you'll have a more interesting walkway. Include little andesite blurbs here with stairs, put lanterns on them, maybe some decorated pots, barrels, etc. And now you have more areas. And while this is a starter base and generally you aren't meant to expand this indefinitely or include every single thing in the game here, so it can be useful. And one final thing, put light sources under the water. Although shroom lights are from the nether, you can use lanterns. It's up to you what you want to use there as long as it will fit underwater. Right here, you can see this path is now textured. 
and also I started incorporating bricks into it as well. You know, another block in order to keep it fresh. You could introduce dripstone into it, but I don't recommend it. There's another thing you should keep in mind. Make sure you don't fall into random gaps while walking on the stairs to make these cracks. Because, well, that would be quite inconvenient and it doesn't look very nice compared to the rest of the build. As long as it looks something like this, then you shouldn't be falling into anything. And now, your base, or your starter, is actually pretty much done. There's only one thing left to do, and that is what you're going to do with the other side if you want to build a second side to it. I mean, you already have your day one stuff here, and then you have your minimal essentials here. If need be, you can build more huts around, etc. And then on this side, you can make a mine if there's something else you want to do. Maybe there's a cave behind it. I didn't actually plan this. Now I feel obligated to do something with it later. Well, you can do that. But for now, I'm going to leave this pretty much blank. I'm going to add a fake door over it, and that's about it. Which means this build is complete. It has your crops, it has your animals, really easy to build, excluding the rest of the area, but still, that'll be really easy. You can build this in probably three minutes or less. Well, you have everything you need. You can even put a fence post with a horse outside, and what do you know? You already have your transport right next to your house. And what do you know? It's a cute little area. You can expand it if need be, but otherwise, it's just a starter house. Nothing more to it. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out.